We come now to the study of uh, friction and how that uh, affects motion. We're not going to take a look in detail at the interaction of uh, the rough uh, nature of surfaces. We're going to take a simplified model of friction and uh, calculate force based on this simplified model. Something that you should take note of right away is that friction is in the opposite direction to the motion that might be taking place or if someone's pushing or pulling on this crate and it hasn't quite started moving yet even before it starts moving friction will oppose the attempted motion so the direction of friction friction is a force it has a direction that direction is opposed to the motion or the uh, attempted motion that uh, we're looking at so Here's our model for friction. There are two types of friction. Before the box starts moving or any other object starts moving across the surface, then we have static friction. If there's no sliding yet, then we have static friction. And the static friction is a variable force. Uh, if we push with 5 newtons on a box and that box does not start to move, the static friction force will be 5 newtons back against our applied force. If we push with 10 newtons, then the static friction becomes 10 newtons. If we push with 20 newtons, the static friction becomes 20 newtons, up to a limit. And that limit is mu sub s, the coefficient of static friction, multiplied by the normal force. The normal force is the uh, contact force perpendicular to the surface. Mu sub s, this mu means coefficient of friction. And there's a table that tells us values of mu sub s and later mu sub k for different combinations of surfaces one type of material sliding against another uh, the mu sub s changes depending on the type of material and how much interaction there is but the static friction is a variable force we only uh, have as much static friction force as needed so if i push with 20 newtons and mu sub s times uh, normal force allows for 30 newtons if I push with 20 newtons, I'll get 20 newtons of static friction force. If I push with 25 newtons, the static friction force will be 25. If I push with 33 newtons, the static friction I claimed here was limited to 30 newtons by the multiplication of these two factors. And the object will break free and will start sliding. When there is motion taking place, there's less interaction between the surfaces. And we use a different coefficient, the kinetic coefficient. And you should look in the table and you'll find that the kinetic numbers are smaller than the static friction numbers. And now once we break free we don't need as much force to keep the object moving at constant speed, uh, constant velocity. So static friction is variable. It goes up to a value that is larger than the kinetic friction value. And again friction opposes the tendency to move and opposes our velocity if uh, we are in motion. Uh, so in our net force calculations, we're going to end up subtracting force of friction. Um, an example of this would be a skier going down a slope. Um, calculating the force of friction, we need the normal force. The normal force is number is provided to us by calculating the component of the weight perpendicular to the surface. So you'll be using cosine of the angle of the ramp. This is, the ramp angle is the same as this little angle up here. In your drawing, you'll draw the weight of the uh, object or person as the hypotenuse of the triangle. Cosine of this angle multiplied by the hypotenuse gives us this W perpendicular. That gives us the magnitude of the normal force. And then some coefficient of friction multiplied by the N, and we get the uh, frictional force and again opposing the motion the skier is going downhill it's a kinetic uh, situation uh, our frictional force would be up our free body diagram again they could have uh, done the component of w here we're going to need this w parallel to the ramp it's going to be acting up here and there's going to be a subtraction this w parallel to the ramp will subtract friction to get our net force and uh, the skier will go down the slope. But that's our situation for friction. It opposes motion, 
There are two types of friction, static friction and kinetic friction. You have to be sure what the surfaces are, and then whether you're in a kinetic situation or static situation, and um, refer to the table, get the proper number for mu, the coefficient of friction, get the proper number out of the table, and then you can calculate the force of friction. So that'll be our scheme. I won't do any example problems in this video, but look uh, for some other videos that have examples of friction calculations. You should take note that uh, the those formulas I gave you earlier have the normal force in them, and there is a proportionality. Uh, the friction force is proportional to the normal force. They're not in the same direction, but uh, the normal force, if it increases, there's more electrical interaction between the atoms and the two uh, substances, and we get a larger frictional force. Um, again, we're not doing all the details of friction, taking the simplified model of uh, coefficient of friction times the normal force gives us the frictional force. Then just briefly, uh, some comments on springs and Hooke's Law. Uh, when we stretch something, it takes force to do that. So on the horizontal axis here, you can see the force. Uh, on this uh, vertical axis, that's how much the spring or rubber band is stretching. There's a region uh, where the graph is linear. That if I have twice as much force, I get twice as much stretch. And we model this region in here with F equals minus KX. Now the minus sign is just there to remind us that the when we stretch a spring in one direction, the spring is going to pull back in the, in the other direction. So that minus sign just tells us there's a restoring force, a force that would like to bring the spring back to its starting condition. But uh, the force due to springs, F equals minus KX, where X represents the stretch. They're using delta L here, but very often you'll see uh, me use X for the amount of stretch. So that's a little introduction to Chapter 5 and a wrap for Chapter 5. Uh, the rest of our time in class will be spent working examples. Look for a few examples on YouTube.